Okay, this video is now finishing up the sample test from functions trigonometry on inverses, identities, and equations. And we're going to be looking at the identities, so the last piece of paper on the sample test. So we're supposed to verify three of the following four identities for the sample. Let's go ahead and try and get all four of them done. Um, on your real test, you would be able to skip one of them if you needed to. The first thing that I would do is probably do a brain dump of what are my fundamental identities. I need to know that the sine of theta is 1 over the cosecant, or vice versa, the cosecant is 1 over the sine. I need to know that the cosine is 1 over the secant. I need to know that the tangent is 1 over the cotangent. I need to know that the tangent is the sine over the cosine. And the cotangent is the cosine over the sine. Then I have my Pythagorean identities. My first is that the cosine squared plus the sine squared is equal to 1. That's my big one. And then I need to develop the other two in case I don't know them. I know that if I divide everybody by sine squared, I'm going to get one of them, and if I divide everybody by cosine squared, I should get the other one. So let's start out. First, we'll divide by sine squared. If I divide by sine squared, cosine squared over sine squared is cotangent squared. Sine squared over sine squared is 1, and 1 over sine squared is cosecant squared. If I divide everybody by cosine squared, I have cosine squared over cosine squared, which is 1, plus sine squared over cosine squared, which would be tangent squared and then 1 over cosine squared, which is secant squared. So those are my three Pythagorean identities. Again, you got to just know this when you walk in to take your test. All right, now let's get to actually proving some identities. So on the first one, the first thing I want to do is I'm going to write down the word proof. I like to remind myself I'm doing a proof, and then I'm going to choose which side I want to work with. I want to work with a more complicated side, so this is the side I'm going to work with. So I'm going to copy that side down exactly, just it, it helps me to look at it and know this is what I'm starting with. Then my other side, which I'm not going to touch, this 2 tangent theta, I want to keep that in mind the whole time. That's my goal. I need the bottom of the page to say 2 tangent theta. So if I'm trying to get to 2 tangent theta, that's only one thing. So I'm going to need to put these two things together. And in order to put them together, I'm going to have to have a common denominator and all that. Um, before I go to do that, I also realize on the left I have secant, cosecant, sine, and cosine, and on the right I only have one trig function. So I think the first thing I would probably do is I would rewrite everything in terms of sine and cosine. So starting with the top, the top of the first fraction was secant, so that's 1 over cosine. The bottom of the first fraction was cosecant, so that's 1 over sine. And then my second fraction right here I'm not touching right now. I'm just leaving that sine over cosine for the moment. Even though I'm not touching it, I still have to write it down. Every line in my proof should be equivalent to the line above it. So now I'm ready to do my next one. And uh, I don't like this fraction in a fraction business. 1 over cosine divided by 1 over sine is the same thing as sine over cosine. And that's just a division. And then I was adding to that another sine over cosine. Uh, at this point, I could either add those two things together, or I could change them both into tangents. It doesn't matter which I do first. I think I'll change them into tangents. Sine over cosine is tangent. Another sine over cosine is tangent. So now I have a tangent plus a tangent, which is two tangents. That's exactly what my goal expression was, so I'm done. I'm going to put a check. I'm going to write QED, and that lets myself know that I'm finished with this problem. I haven't had any math miracles going on. I've clearly shown everything from one step to the next. All right, let's go on to B. On B, again, the left side looks like it's my more complicated side. So I'm going to start out, and I'm going to write the word, whoa, that's supposed to be proof, but I'm writing it all backwards. Um, I want to write the word proof, P-R-O-O-F. There we go. I'm going to copy this side, which was tangent theta plus cosine theta over 1 plus sine of theta. And that's what I'm going to work with. Secant is my goal. Although I'm not going to write this down, I know that secant is 1 over cosine, so I'm probably going to wind up with that at some point in time. Right now I've got tangents, I've got cosines, I've got sines, I've got all sorts of things. Um, so I think in this one I would probably turn it over into sine and cosine as well. So the first thing I'm going to do is change this first tangent expression into sine over cosine. 
And uh, my second expression was cosine of theta over 1 plus sine of theta. I'm not going to touch that at all because it was already in sine and cosine. Now I've got two fractions. I know my goal expression up here was only one thing, so I'm going to need to put these two fractions together. How do I put two fractions together? I have to have a common denominator. So I'm going to get a common denominator for this. My first fraction has cosine in the denominator, and my second has 1 plus sine in the denominator. So I need to put a 1 plus sine on both the top and bottom of the first fraction to get a common denominator. My second fraction was cosine over 1 plus sine. So that fraction was missing a cosine. So I'm going to put a cosine on the top and bottom for that fraction. So now, if I go through and simplify this, uh, on the top over here, I have sine times 1 plus sine, so I'll distribute that sine, and I'll get sine plus sine squared. And then in my second fraction, I just have cosine times cosine, which is cosine squared. On the bottom of the fraction, I have cosine times 1 plus sine. I would not distribute this. You may have. The reason that I don't distribute it is because I'm keeping my goal in mind. My goal was secant, so I know in my goal I want to have a cosine on the bottom. So I'm going to leave this little cosine right here on the bottom in hopes that I can get rid of the other stuff and just turn it into a secant. All right, so now I'm looking at this and I'm saying, what can I do? Well, I see some squareds on the top. Whenever I see squareds, I always look for Pythagorean identities. I have sine squared plus cosine squared. Well, sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1, so I can replace that with a 1. the bottom I haven't touched right now. Now I'm seeing I can reduce. 1 plus sine and sine plus 1 are the same thing, so I can reduce that factor out. I'm going to scroll my page down just a little bit here. So if I reduce them, I'll have 1 over cosine. 1 over cosine is secant, so I am done. So that's secant theta. I'll put my little check. I write QED to say I am done with this problem. I've shown everything I need to show. No math miracles, everything worked out, clearly shown one step at a time. All right, let's turn over to the back page. Um, on C, you could really make an argument. I think half the time I would have started with the left side, half the time I would have started with the right side. Um, maybe I'll just go through and do them both for you. It just depends on what you see. If you started with the left side, you would have written proof. Start with the left. Now I'm looking at what I have and what I'm trying to get. And I notice that on my left side right here, I have 1 plus sine and 1 minus sine. And 1 plus sine and 1 minus sine happen to be conjugates. Um, so I multiplied by the conjugate of the denominator. Um, and I multiplied then by, whoops, sorry, 1 minus sine on the top and bottom. If I do that, on the top of my fraction, when I multiply this out, um, I probably wouldn't multiply it out because I notice that my goal expression over here has a squared on the outside. So I like that right now I have a 1 minus sign and that that's squared, so I decided not to multiply that out. On the bottom, the whole reason I do conjugates is so that I can multiply them out and 1 plus sine times 1 minus sine would be 1 minus sine squared because the middle terms would drop out. So what I really have down there on the bottom now, 1 minus sine squared, I'm going to leave the top the same, still writing it though. On the bottom I have 1 minus sine squared, which was equal to cosine squared by my fundamental identity. So this is good because now I have two things that are squared. So instead I'm going to write this and I'm going to separate it and I'm going to put the squared on the outside because that's what an exponent is. I can write the exponent on the inside of the outside of the fraction. Now let me rewrite my goal down here because I can't see it up from the top. My goal was to get secant of theta minus tangent of theta, that quantity squared. So there we go. I can scoot up again now. And I know that secant is 1 over cosine, and tangent is sine over cosine. And I can see the framework of that starting in what I have right now if I just split up my fraction that I have inside into 1 over cosine minus sine over cosine. 
I can split the top of a fraction because you can just think if I took what's inside here and added it back together, I'd have a common denominator and I'd get what I have on the line above. You can't split if the bottom of the fraction is added or subtracted, just the top. All right, so now what do I have? My first fraction is 1 over cosine, which is secant. And my second fraction is sine over cosine, which is tangent. So there we go. That was my goal. I'm good. QED. All right. While I'm over here, I'm just going to go ahead and do the second way. So my second option was to write proof and then start with the secant of theta minus the tangent of theta, the quantity squared. And I'm trying to turn that into my 1 minus sine over 1 plus sine. So in this case, my goal has sines and cosines, and the expression I have right now doesn't. So I would turn secant into 1 over cosine. I would turn tangent into sine over cosine. I also notice that my goal is just one fraction. So I would put these two fractions together right now, and then I'd have 1 minus sine on top and cosine on bottom. I already had a com common denominator, so that was nice and convenient. Uh, then I also notice I don't have a squared in what I want in my goal, so I would go ahead and take the squared. So I have 1 minus sine squared, and on the bottom, I have cosine squared. Now, I didn't multiply out the top because in my goal expression, I want 1 minus sine on the top. And if I FOIL that out, I'm not going to have 1 minus sine left on the top. So I just wrote it as a squared expression. On the bottom, I have cosines. And I know in my goal, I don't want any cosines. So I'm going to replace the cosine on the bottom with 1 minus sine squared. Sorry, the cosine squared replaced with 1 minus sine squared. I cannot just start crossing things out. I can only reduce factors. So on the top, I have 1 minus sine times 1 minus sine, because it's 1 minus sine squared. On the bottom, I have 1 minus sine squared, and that's the difference of squares. So when I factor that, that factors into 1 plus sine times 1 minus sine. Now that I have it in factored form, I can reduce the 1 minus sine from the top and the bottom. And that gives me 1 minus sine over 1 plus sine, which was my goal expression. So I'm good. QED, that one's been proved as well. OK, now for the last one. This was D. I had 3 sine squared plus 4 cosine squared equals 3 plus cosine squared. So I'm going to work with the left because that has two different trig functions. And my goal will be what's over here on the right, which is only cosine squareds and numbers. So I'm going to write proof. I'm going to copy down the left side that I'm working with, 3 sine squared plus 4 cosine squared. Whenever I see squareds, one of the things I look for is Pythagoreans. So I could replace either sine squared or cosine squared. I want to replace sine squared because my goal only has cosine squared. Sine squared is 1 minus cosine squared. So I can leave the 3 the same and the plus 4 cosine squared the same and just replace the sine squared with the 1 minus cosine squared. Then in my next step, I would want to distribute my 3. So that would be 3 minus 3 cosine squared plus 4 cosine squared. Well, I see the 3. That was part of my goal expression. So I like that. I'm going to keep it. And then in my goal expression, I just had plus a cosine squared. And I can see these are like terms. I have minus 3 of these cosine squareds plus 4 of these cosine squareds would be 1 of these cosine squareds. And that was my goal. So I'm done. QED, check that off. So again, you just really need to practice doing these proofs until you can get more fluid with them. And you've got to know those fundamental identities from the start or you're not going to be able to progress through.